Some action games are stylish. And some action games are brutal. Some action games are colorful and fantastic. And some are atmospheric and creepy. Some action games test your skills to the max. And others seem made to piss you off. But then there are also some action games that are dumb. Just. Plain. Dumb. The Chikyu Boygun 2 is a dumb action game. But that doesn't make it bad. On the contrary, it's badass. Like Bruce Campbell badass. Just like with movies, at times us gamers need to take a break from more intelligent, thought-provoking media and shut off our brains with some dumb, badass action. The GQ Boy Goon 2 is the kind of game you wind down to after a long day, kill hundreds of things, and blow up stuff without the need to stress more than a single brain cell. The game was released in Japan in 2005, developed by Sandlot and published by D3 Publisher. It is Volume 81, yes, 81, in D3 Publisher's prolific Simple Series 2000 line of budget games. Named so because each title in the series retails for 2,000 yen minus tax, which amounts to about 20 US dollars. Translated into English, Chikyu Boygun 2 is Earth Defense Force 2, so I'll use that to refer to the game from this point on. It never came to North America, but saw a European release under the name Global Defense Force. In fact, several Simple Series 2000 titles were published by D3 in Europe under the Essential Games designation. This game takes place in 2019, two years after Earth Defense Forces repelled an alien invasion that caused mass mayhem across the globe. The recovery efforts have progressed at an alarmingly fast rate, and order is restored across the world. The EDF, which suffered many losses from the previous conflict, has been rebuilt. Humanity has enjoyed two years of peace, but suddenly the alien invaders appear once again, deep from the Earth and from vast distances across space. Earth Defense Force 2 puts you in the role of one of two characters, a normal EDF ground trooper, or Pale Wing, an elite unit that takes advantage of alien technology cultivated from the previous invasion. Each character can equip two different weapons at a time and have unique skill sets, which have their advantages and disadvantages. The EDF foot soldier is pretty agile, can jump high and has a nifty dodge roll that is an essential part of his playstyle. He can also commandeer vehicles, but they are pretty useless and only worth using as a means of escape. Pale Wing by comparison is slow, does a pathetic little hop, cannot roll, cannot dodge, and cannot use vehicles. She makes this all up though with a sweet jetpack that makes her extremely mobile and deadly in the air. The ground trooper uses standard human artillery, machine guns, shotguns, rocket launchers, sniper rifles, and the like. Each weapon has infinite ammo, and pretty much any weapon can be used to complete any level. However, some weapons are better to use depending on the situation, and choosing the best ones means considering a variety of different factors, such as damage per shot, rate of fire, and reload times. Sometimes you'll want something to shoot flying objects from afar, and other times you'll want something to mow everything down at close range. I'd like to keep this handy for close encounters. I heard that. Pale Wing's arsenal consists of optic, energy-based weapons, some of which resemble conventional arms, but many which truly feel alien and experimental. Ammo is also infinite, but reloading, as well as use of the jetpack, deplete Pale Wing's energy meter, which gradually replenishes over a short period of time. It is important to keep an eye on the energy meter, because if you run out of energy completely, you're often left helpless while waiting for the meter to fill up again. The default controls use a very dated, impractical control scheme that ignores use of the right stick entirely. Thankfully, you can switch over to a technical control scheme, which is pretty much the standard way shooting games are played these days, utilizing the left stick to move, the right stick to aim, and the shoulder buttons for everything else. This is really the only way to play the game, in my opinion. Using the ground trooper is fun and has a standard run-and-gun arcade game feel to it. Fast, frantic, and at times a bit generic. Playing as Pale Wing, however, is a completely different experience, flying around and using some truly magnificent weaponry to crush your foes. There are 71 missions and 5 initial difficulty levels that are shared between both character types. The goal of nearly every mission is to simply kill everything on the map. At times this is kind of annoying because there may be a straggler or two that wandered off away from the action, but thanks to a mini-map, you'll be able to find these guys with ease. The enemies' levels and set pieces are inspired from a variety of popular sci-fi. You've got giant bugs attacking the city, robot invaders reminiscent of those found in War of the Worlds, some Godzilla ripoffs, and a giant city block destroying mothership like the one found in Independence Day. 
If you've ever dreamed about shooting Godzilla in the nuts point blank with a shotgun, while also being attacked by three giant spiders, three giant ants, and a giant spaceship, well, this is the game for you. See? Dreams do come true. Finishing a level will reward you with a medal depending on which difficulty and character you completed it with. If you complete all levels of all difficulties with both players, a final difficulty setting, impossible mode, is unlocked. Difficulty does not stack, so this process is incredibly time-consuming and only for the truly dedicated EDF2 players. Also, while the five standard levels of difficulty are available from the start, it is only really feasible to start off on the normal or easy difficulties and work your way up little by little. Enemy health, damage, and aggressiveness are increased exponentially with each mode, and it is basically impossible to complete anything above normal from the start. Thankfully, you'll be able to tackle the harder difficulties over time by increasing your character's health and collecting new, more powerful weapons. Killing an enemy will sometimes drop one of four things. A small first aid kit, a large first aid kit, armor, or a weapon box. The first aid kits restore health during a stage. The armor will add one point to the player's maximum hit points, and the weapon box adds one random weapon to your arsenal. Weapon finds become progressively better as you advance through missions and take on higher difficulties. Additionally, EDF2 supports two-player couch co-op, and for the most part makes level completion much easier. Unfortunately, each player's field of vision is hampered significantly by the vertical split screen. Earth Defense Force 2 sports some low-res textures that recall memories of the N64 era, in-game objects often have low polygon counts, and there are other weird technical glitches here and there. But despite those things, I think this game looks great, mainly due to its grand scale. It's amazing that Sandlot was able to put a game like this on the PlayStation 2, and with such a small budget at that. Everything is huge, and at times there's so many things moving on screen it truly feels chaotic. Sure, at certain points there is some massive slowdown, but more often than not the frame rate remains pretty stable, even during some of the more hectic battles. Gameplay is simple and solid, and except for a few stages, never feels too dull or monotonous. This game was also ported to the PSP in 2011, which was only published in Japan. EDF2 sequel was released for the Xbox 360 in 2006 and saw a release in North America the following year as Earth Defense Force 2017. Story-wise, it's a prequel and lacks many of the features of its predecessor. There is no pale wing, there are less missions and enemy types, and many of the same stages, music, and sound effects are recycled from EDF2. It's still a great game, however, and is definitely worth picking up. If you need to whet your appetite for dumb, badass action games, Earth Defense Force 2 is the game for you. Check it out! I hope you enjoyed the video. Please rate, leave a comment, and check out my channel for videos like this one. Thanks and take care.